Wanted to get you guys the best information possible when you're LS swapping your cars, so we're going to stop by my buddy Joe's shop, JWC Performance in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. How's it going, man? Doing good. Guys, good this is Joe Cool with uh, JWC Performance in Joe, what exactly do you do here at this shop? Just about everything. Major and minor fabrication, wiring, plumbing, roll cages, tin work, everything and anything in between. Uh, and then all your engine performance needs as well. And we do all that in-house. What I want to do, guys, is take a look at this car back here. It is completely LS swapped already. Joe has done a lot of different LS swaps, and I just figured we'd kind of talk to him and just kind of pick his brain and see exactly what parts he has problems with, what parts are easy. What can you tell us about this car? This car was actually a local original car. LS1, the 4L60E, come out of an 04 GTO. What determined that for this build? Uh, budget. Budget. Budget is okay. always key. Also, that, that depends on who's doing the work. The customer did the majority of the, this work himself. This car, On, okay. on this particular car. Gotcha. Uh, we just ironed out a few details and some problems, uh, is, issues that arose. Something like this is a lot more you know, budget friendly. Now, do you get your blocks from somewhere special or do you do you buy them on Craigslist, Marketplace, junkyards, or what, what do you do now, as a shop? Well, the majority of the stuff that we do are fresh builds. Most of the stuff is all LS2 and up just because of the larger bore size. If we're using a stock block configuration, I mean, it could be a used six liter iron block out of something, but a lot of this stuff, is getting to the point where that's getting harder to find for a reasonable price. And your best bet is now that Dart and a few other manufacturers, but Dart is the largest one that we use. I've never heard um, of that. What, what, is, what is that? They make actual blocks? They make or? blocks, they make cylinder heads, they make a lot of uh, okay. engine parts, have been for many, many years. But they've gotten into the LS world and the uh, they've made it affordable with some of their iron blocks that will withstand a lot more power for a very reasonable price. What engine mounts that would you would you use for a Camaro? I really don't have a solid preference. It's just whatever is going to work for that particular project. If we're looking to get the engine a little bit further back, if we have to mount it a little bit further forward for whatever reason, for clearance problems, you know, there's a couple different mounts out there that have uh, multiple plates that have different mount locations yeah. on the plate. The holes drilled in them, I've seen Correct, those. they have yeah. multiple, so you have different options. Some of them don't. Do you find that that interferes with like the the actual cross member down here or anything? Yes, so obviously it depends on the frame of the car. Gotcha. Accessories play into effect. Oil pan fitments, what, what you have available, it play into effect. Exhaust, as far as what headers can fit and what it's gonna clear. And then also the other reason for getting it back is also weight distribution. Correct. The further back we get it, the better off it's gonna be. Okay. The majority of these, we're putting it back mainly for fitment. It works out the best, but then it also works out the best for the weight distribution too. So it's the best of both worlds. It's a win-win. Yeah, it's a win-win, exactly. Because yeah. you gotta get the correct radiator up front here. Right. With probably, do you put fans on those? Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we're normally doing a twin fan uh, set up with the you know largest radiator we can get in it. Okay. Especially for something like this, it's, Procharged, or it's definitely going to need the the better cooling capacity. Is there like a, a, a accessory kit that you buy that you would recommend, or do you just recommend going and getting different pieces from different kits, or what is your? So that all again boils down to budget. Obviously, if budget isn't an issue or not a problem, and we want something that's going to look a little nicer, and then also not have any worries as far as fitment. The tightest accessory setup out there that we really like is uh, from Vintage Air. Vintage Air. Uh, their front runner setup is really nice. It's really tight, compact, and it looks aesthetically the best out there in my opinion. Cool, I've not um, heard that one before, okay. Th there's, obviously there's other manufacturers out there that have uh, aesthetically good looking, you know, front runner setups, but for the most, most of this stuff, we're using a, uh, a factory accessory setup. And depending on the car, will depend on what we can fit. So there's F body accessories, there's Corvette accessories, right? and then there's truck accessories okay they're, they're all based on that but they move the, you know give you the ability to move things around if if there's a certain clearance issue or problem that you're running into with your particular swap as far as wiring goes i have this wiring 
kit that I got with other cars that I've purchased in the past. And, it, it, and I actually spoke to you before about this. This is the classic update kit for a 69 Camaro. This isn't gonna get anywhere near our LS started or anything like this. This is just the wiring kit to rewire the car. And then to actually operate the motor itself, there's a different wiring harness, is that correct? Correct. So for example, the car that I have has all of the old wiring in it. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend just switching over to this to kind of redo all that old stuff to give the car a new life? 100%. 100%. So you don't recommend taking your old wiring harness and doing a standalone kit with that. You recommend basically starting over completely. Yeah, I mean, the, the last thing you want to do is add a brand new engine and brand new engine combination with all new engine wiring and tie that into the original wiring Yeah. Okay. and then have a fault somewhere and the car burns to the ground. <laughs> See, that's, that's, that's why we're here to you because I like to do stuff cheap, <laughs> right. but I want my car to work. Now that answers a lot of questions for me. With the old glass fuses and, and no provisions for uh, added circuits, it makes it difficult. I mean, obviously you can get around it and you can do some, you know, certain things and, and make it all work. But there again, if you're going the extra mile to have a car that, to get in it and drive it anywhere, you know, just like a new car, why wouldn't you update that and be, you know, 100%? Because this is, this is probably the closest thing to what people are gonna have at home. Just to kind of get a basic setup like this, what, what wiring pro, um, system would you use that you have found that, that would save you the most time, that works the best right out of the gate, that's just that, that if you were doing, your car, you know, what would you use? So it, since he already had a, a, a wrecked G GTO, okay. he already had a factory computer. Yes. Now he had the harness, but the problem, it's already integrated into the car. You would have to eliminate and change and, and you know, spend a lot of time. Some people don't know how to do all that. Uh, one of the manufacturers out there that makes it really easy for a factory PCM setup would be uh, Speartech. Okay. Uh, Speartech is definitely uh, one of the best setups that... Um, I've not heard of them before. Okay. Yeah, um, I believe they're out of Illinois. Illinois. Is where he's, he's out of. Again, not sponsored by those guys, but we've used their products so many times. It's just such a nice, you know, it makes it headache free. I have an old gas, not an old gas tank, a gas tank that's probably like, I would say five, six years old in my Camaro. Mm -hmm. uh, would you say just get a whole new complete gas tank for a full uh, EFI setup, or would you say modify the one that I have? Typically, I would recommend getting a new tank new that tank. has everything integrated in it. They'll have added baffling for the pump and everything that's in it. You, you don't like the external pumps, is that what you're saying? You want yeah, the, the main stuff? reason is, is because with the internal pump, we're keeping it colder or cooler, being okay. submerged in the fuel. Space, again, it's out of the way. It's not mounted on the frame rail and that's next to exhaust, causing right. other issues and problems. Overall, it, it just works out much better having it in the tank. Okay, so new tank, fuel pump on the inside of the mm -hmm. actual tank itself. Mm -hmm. Have you ever done any stuff with like the carbureted setup on, on these cars or do you just do everything electronic? EFI. Fuel, everything yeah. EFI, mm -hmm. you don't recommend any carbureted stuff? I don't understand because that's kind of what I'm trying to get away from. Right. <laughs> but I've, I've seen a lot of them that are carbureted, so I just yeah. wasn't really sure. To me, it doesn't really make sense. Okay. I mean, you're- We're kind of on the same page. We're, we're trying to take full advantage of the late model world right. in our classic vehicle. So to carbureted, it, uh, yeah, we're getting the newer technology as far as the power wise out of that engine, but we're kind of going backwards a little bit. So we're not really taking full advantage. If you're not using a factory PCM, what would you recommend then? If I was gonna do, for most of this stuff, a Holly HP is, is, HP. Okay. is a great setup, great system. You have wideband, you know, closed loop wideband control. So the drivability on you know, no matter what the combination is, can be really, really good. If you don't have a, a computer to start with and you have to buy it, well then you have to buy the, you pay the core charge on top of it, which the core charge is not cheap. It's normally about the same money as the PCM. So you have to take the final dollar amount and where you're gonna be at to do all that stuff versus, you know, going aftermarket you know, and what you're gonna be further ahead with. You've actually, you make these valve covers and is there a reason that you started making those or or did you just make those just to make them? Or? No, so the reason we started making billet uh, valve covers was I got tired of buying billet valve covers from other manufacturers that were supposed to fit and didn't fit. 
Okay. So you spend $600 on a product and you still have to modify it to make it fit. I look at these cars and I see that they have the coil packs on top of the valve covers. Would these work with coil packs on top or are these designed so that if they have the stuff that makes the coil packs look a little more aesthetic that this is the valve cover that you would use or what? There's a couple different um, manufacturers out there that make these uh, billet mounts like this. Okay. These are from Moroso. And what we did is we modeled our valve cover around their coil pack mounts. The coil pack, okay. Uh, now we make these with or without. So if you remote mount them somewhere else in the car. Oh, you can mount those coil packs somewhere else? In yeah, the car? you can mount them wherever. The guys mount them up underneath the cowl in these cars. First gen Camaros, we, you know, we, we've made uh, mounts to mount them, you know, hidden up in, in behind the uh, the fender well another question for you do you recommend like the drive-by wire stuff or the drive-by um the cable or because drive-by wire is not actually drive-by wire right it's it's um electronic isn't it yeah it's all electronic, all it's, electronic. essentially it is all drive-by wire okay. uh, because <laughs> <laughs> it's all powered by a wire there is no cable they were originally unless it was out of a corvette it was originally a cable driven throttle body it also depends on your setup uh, and what you want to do on the inside of the car, how you want to mount, mount in the electronic panel. I mean, my personal preference is the cable. I think this has cleared up a lot of questions for me. I, I hope that it's cleared up a lot of questions for you guys at home. If you guys have any questions for Joe, what is the website? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, JWC Performance. It's, well, it's JWC-Performance.com. All right, Joe. Well, hey, I appreciate yep. it. Thank you so yep. much. Thank you. Yep. Good seeing you.